Hurricane Lee is preparing to make landfall somewhere along the northeastern coastline of the United States or the eastern Canadian provinces. Today, unfortunately, we were hoping for a better consensus in a lot of our ensemble members across model platforms and a better track indicated by our deterministic models. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between the two today, but unfortunately, it looks like the swath has expanded once again. Also, looks like there's another possibly major hurricane brewing in the eastern Atlantic as we speak, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Today as well guys thank you for tuning in to weather center nazario Before we get started, I want to go ahead and say, let's all take a moment of silence, those of you viewing this, to remember those we've lost and those who are still affected, unfortunately, by the events of September 11th, 2001. We remember not only those lost in the unfortunate events, but we also remember the first responders who were on the scene before a moment's notice could go by when the attacks were ongoing. And we also want to always remember and remind ourselves of those who were lost overseas fighting the good fight to keep America safe and those who are still serving nowadays. It goes without saying, without you brave men and women, we would not be here doing what we do and I would not be here providing you the coverage that I do, albeit thanks to your hard work and dedication to the service. I can humbly say I'm very proud to have served in some capacity over the last 10 years as a United States Air Force Airman, weather forecaster, and I couldn't be more humbly proud to have served along the likes of the men and women I encountered throughout that journey. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you to everybody out there who continues to do what they do to provide all the health, wellness, and safety for those folks afflicted by the tragic events of 9-11 and those who still have to deal with the aftermath even 22 years later. God bless you all and your families, and let's go ahead and get into the video. Alrighty folks, we're getting started with National Hurricane Center's homepage. As you can see, we have our disturbances off the African coastline still doing their thing in close proximity of one another. Tropical Storm Margo has intensified quite a bit since we talked about her yesterday, and she's right on the cusp of becoming a hurricane. And we're all very familiar with Hurricane Lee, who is situated to the north of our Caribbean islands, providing little influence to them in terms of their weather pattern right now, which is a good thing after all the anticipation behind this storm as he brewed off to their east. This is our 11 a.m. advisory for Hurricane Lee. Winds are still steady at 120 miles per hour sustained in the center with gusts approaching somewhere between 145 to 150. Minimum essential pressure has come down a little bit over the last 24 hours. He's down to a 948 millibar central pressure, which is indicative of further intensification, which I do believe we'll see over the next 24 hours before he starts to make his turn to the north. As you can see with the latest information with Tropical Storm Margo, she does have sustained winds of 70 miles per hour in her center of circulation. She is only four miles per hour away from becoming a Category 1 hurricane. The central pressure can continues to drop, albeit at a steady rate, down to 993 millibars, which is much lower than what we saw yesterday, so she is undergoing further cyclogenesis, and I do believe she's going to sustain that Category 1 intensity as we go over the next couple of days and continue to transition her off to the north. Now, believe it or not, despite popular belief in what we talked about yesterday on Weather Center, this little entity here, disturbance number one with the 10% probability, is Invest AL97. The second disturbance is not currently highlighted by National Hurricane Center. Center, but some of the high-res computer models like the HAFS A and B and the h -Wharf indicate that these two systems could butt up against one another and have what is called the Fujiwara effect take place where these two systems merge into one central low pressure and that will be our newly formed Invest 97L. You could essentially highlight these one in the same storm before the merger takes place. However, once the merger does take place, we do anticipate that this orange shading here is what the projected path is likely to be over the next few days. Before we continue to talk about 97L and its part disturbance, let's take a closer look at Hurricane Lee, who's looking a lot more symmetrical on satellite. You can kind of get an idea of where the center is, albeit that there is some CDO covering the center of circulation. The eye is trying to show itself, but it does seem to be struggling holding on to that internal structure, unfortunately, as he continues to transition northwest at that nine miles per hour indicated by National Hurricane Center. It still is a very healthy storm. It's still a major storm as well, so we don't want to let our guard down, despite the fact that he's not undergoing that infamous rapid intensification we saw a few days ago. He is still expected to strengthen a little bit more, possibly make it into that Category 4 realm since he's only just a couple mile per hour outside of that threshold as well. As he makes his way to the north, despite a small weakening trend indicated by National Hurricane Center's projected path, we do anticipate that Bermuda could interact with this system on the eastern side and see tropical storm conditions impact the area at least for a small window of time as he rapidly accelerates off to the north and eventually the northeast. We switch over to future Hurricane Margo, taking a look at the visible satellite she's 
She's looking very impressive. We have good thunderstorm activity wrapped around her center, and there's a bit of an eye feature already starting to show itself on this visible satellite imagery. You can see a tremendous amount of inflow along the southern flank of this storm, too, which is really helping to develop good thunderstorm activity amongst its right front quadrant. We have inflow from the south and a little bit of inflow coming in from the southeast as well. So that's exactly why we're seeing such an influx of thunderstorm activity wrapping up in its circulation. There is still a bit of wind shear off to the north. You can kind of get an idea of it just looking at the high level cirrus, not only in terms of her outflow, but also with these small clusters of cumulus off to her north, indicative of that high pressure that's helping to steer her out into the Atlantic further. So we have a fairly healthy storm, nothing too crazy, not affecting anybody, but it's nice to see that she's undergone further cyclogenesis and actually looks pretty good on satellite. It's a very healthy storm, albeit one we can observe from a distance. All right, let's take a look at Lee again. So yesterday we were starting to develop a bit more confidence as to where this storm could go, and unfortunately now the ensembles have once again started to spread out pretty dramatically over the northeast and eastern Canada. You can see a fanning out with some of the ensembles arguing that we could see a landfall somewhere in the Manhattan, Massachusetts area, and some agreeing that it could go far off enough to maybe skirt the coastline of St. John's, but continue off into the North Atlantic, no harm, no foul, with a little bit of residual impact along the eastern coastline as he skirts off to the north and northeast. Over the next few days, we do have a fair bit of confidence as to when this storm is going to turn. If you look in this general area, we finally have a very tight concentration of our ensemble members, which is good, so we can completely discount any attempt at him continuing further west or further to the east. Bermuda, however, is going to be under the gun with tropical storm conditions. I do anticipate as he surges to the north, especially if he can hold on to a bit more of his intensity than some of the models are indicating. You can see this here in our 12Z Euro model as well. We are figuring some further intensification of this storm, but once he starts to make his way north, we're going to see a bit of a weakening trend, albeit still major hurricane status until maybe Friday going into Saturday, we'll start to see him weaken down. And then as he makes his way between two areas of high pressure, we have one in this general area, the darker shades of orange, and then we also have this high pressure to the north of Margo, helping to direct her further up to the north. That's when he is going to begin to kind of make a bit of a westward jog. Some of the models have been indicating this over the last 12 hours since this morning we woke up with 0Z data. We have started to notice that there is a bit of a westward shift, a bit of a hike. Not a huge trend, but just a bit of a kick to the left that could play a major role in how much of an impact we see up in the main area and Nova Scotia, New Brunswick regions. You can see this a little bit more with the GFS as well. I know we have a zoomed in AOI here, but you see that little bit of a left hand shift right about there between the hours of 0 and 12Z this upcoming Saturday. Still an anticipated 963 millibar low making his way into the coastline, and I think that is exactly why we could see a bit of a landfall with this feature. As that high pressure I mentioned on the European model builds into his north, we see a bit of stagnation just off the coast before he pushes northeastward or east-northeast into Nova Scotia and could potentially impact that area as well. Switching over to our 12Z ensembles, you can see quite a bit of good agreement with Margo and Lee, at least initially with Margo, before we get that fanning out effect we talked about yesterday. Some of the ensembles want to take her back south as a hurricane, maybe high-grade tropical storm. Others want to continue her off to the north-northwest, kind of being influenced by that high pressure we talked about on the Euro model, and a little bit of influence from Hurricane Lee off to its west. And you can see that the GFS is still increasing the probability we'll see development in the central main development region in terms of our two disturbances shrinking down to one as we go forward in time. We do not have 12Z Euro data in, unfortunately, so I will refer back to the 0Z run of the Euro earlier this morning. We do have pretty good consistency between the GFS and the Euro. We're expecting a west-northwest track with Hurricane Lee, albeit this model actually shows it as a bit more stronger of a hurricane, definitely major in status. This is below the 950 millibar threshold, which verifies well with what we're seeing in terms of NHC's observations of the storm. And then once he begins to make that turn to the north, a lot of our members agree we will start to see a bit of a weakening trend, albeit there is one member that gets dangerously close to Bermuda and still carries it off to the north as a sub 950 millibar low. So Bermuda, we're watching closely for you guys. I do anticipate we're going to see impacts regardless because of the wide swath of influence this storm has. But if it gets that close for comfort, we could be looking at something a bit more dangerous on our hands. Switching over to tropical storms, soon to be Hurricane Margo, you can see that the GFS and the Euro are also in agreement that we could see that fanning out effect of the different tracks it could take, some taking it south, others taking it north, which is very interesting. Some of the models want to build in high pressure to its north and kind of bump it back down to the south and eventually kicking it back to the north once she gets a window of opportunity. As we turn our focus to the two disturbances off the African coast and the eastern Atlantic who are eventually expected to turn to one and work off to the west, there is still quite a bit of disagreement in terms of what our ensemble members on the Euro and the GFS alike anticipate this storm could do. We have a fair bit of agreement that we can project it off to the west-northwest at potentially a greater degree or a bit more of a low curve 
curve to the west-northwest as opposed to the northwest indicated by some of our more northern model runs here. As you go forward in time, the spread becomes a lot more dramatic as with some of our ensembles beginning to transition it closer to our Caribbean islands, which was a fear we had with Hurricane Lee. Still quite a ways out to get ahead of this and get a better understanding of what the dynamics in play look like, so we'll have to pay attention. It's still quite concerning that we have some members wanting to push it towards the Caribbean. We may not see a full Caribbean Sea entry made, but there could be some weather impacts felt along our northern Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. As you go forward in time, we continue to see this swath increase before finally hooking off to the northeast, no longer playing a role in future weather for the northeast or anybody in the United States for that matter. Before we get any further into this video, I wanted to take a brief moment to kind of introduce you guys to the difference between deterministic or operational models on the left-hand side of the screen and our ensemble models on the right-hand side of the screen. There are two distinct differences between deterministic or operational models and ensemble models. Ensemble members are typically one model platform with multiple scenarios or members of that same model branching out and kind of coming up with their own depiction based on a given scenario of the big picture weather pattern. Our deterministic models are taking into account initial weather conditions or analysis data plugged in at the start of the cardinal hour of each model run. That's also why we tend to lean more on our 0 and 12Z model runs because because they have fresh analysis data from all the Raywind sand and balloons that National Weather Service locations across the globe are sending up. Deterministic models are going to give their best determination of the likely outlook over the next five to seven days. After that point, since they only take into consideration initial conditions, they start to go downhill in terms of accuracy. Ensemble members, however, are going to be a bit more accurate long term because you get to play around with and tweak the data as they go further in time. You can kind of think of ensembles as a group of surveyors or folks that are taking a survey and asking a bunch of different questions on the likelihood of if this were to happen or if this were to change or if this were to take place, this is the likely outcome given over a broader spectrum of time. So you have a bit more wiggle room with ensembles, especially when you have a situation like Invest 97L who's way out far in time, whereas now as we get closer and closer to a potential landfall with Lee, we can start to look closer at ensembles and deterministic tracks because we're within that five to seven day window. I hope that kind of clears it up, guys. Ensembles are usually going to be one separate model platform with a number of different different scenarios playing within that supercomputer, whereas deterministic is going to be one cardinal model, that one operational model, taking into account or ingesting analysis data for its model run and then spitting out information in one piece. Operational models are great for short to mid-range, whereas ensembles are going to be great for long-term forecasting and looking at trends and probabilities and seeing what kind of agreement the model has in terms of a likely scenario panning out. The more agreement you have, i.e. the number of members who agree that that could be the scenario scenario that unfolds based on the different information plugged into the model versus the lesser agreements you have gives you a bit more confidence in your long-term forecasts. All right, everybody, back to the video. We're going to take a look at our halves A and B models real quick. As you can see, there are two distinct circulation centers out there. This is fixated over 97L currently, and here's our other disturbance with the greater chance highlighted by National Hurricane Center of Development. If you watch closely as I roll through time, we get a very interesting effect where the two merge together. You can see we're starting to see that lower pressure center back behind it or upstream of our center of circulation begin to absorb into 97L and they become this very broad conglomeration of low pressure before we finally see them merge successfully. You can see the same thing on our half speed model. We have that merger effect taking place over the East Atlantic before they finally begin to transition off to the West Northwest as a sole disturbance or center of circulation and deepening into a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm by the end of our run. The only discrepancy I see between these two hurricane models is the half A wants to take it a bit further to the north, whereas the B wants to take it a little further to the west. So if you referred to my video yesterday, I had mentioned a little bit of chaos unfolding with this upstream system because of the fact that none of the models have a really firm handle on it just yet. I do anticipate over the coming days as we get more model data in and we get a little bit more investigation done in terms of analysis data, we'll get a better feel for this system as to whether it's going to go up to the north or get closer to the United States. But until then, it remains to be seen exactly what's going to happen outside of good potential for development as we go over the coming days and the rest of this week. We'll prepare to close out this episode by taking a good long look at the two disturbances out over the East Atlantic off the coast of Africa. Here is disturbance number two, trying to get its act together with minimal thunderstorm activity associated with it, but you can pinpoint a little bit of a weak low pressure starting to form in that lower cloud cover. Here is our current Invest 97L, which is starting to get a bit more convective activity closer to its center of circulation, but it is still looking a little more sheared off to its western flank. These are our two disturbances in question that are likely to undergo a bit of a merger effect as we go over the next couple of days before finally 
finally deepening down and becoming our next name storm. As of right now, future tracks for this system look a little unclear, especially when you compare the different deterministic runs and the ensemble products that we've looked at previously. It goes without saying there is quite a bit of chaos unfolding with all the different model platforms with these two systems, and I do believe that because we're seeing the two different systems in close proximity to one another, that's why the models are struggling and trying to get a better feel for what's going to happen once they either wash the other out or they merge together and finally move off to the west-northwest. Once we get Lee and the likes of Margo out of the big picture weather pattern, it'll also become a little bit more clear as to what kind of path they're going to take as they go through time. But for now, folks, this about wraps up our episode. Let's go ahead and walk into the outro. We've officially reached the finish line. It is September 11th, 2023, and we've wrapped up episode 27 of Weather Center Nazario. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to all my supporters and my genuine subscribers who continue to follow along the progress of all the entities we have out in the tropics, and to those of you who entrust me with getting your weather information across to you in a timely manner and an effective manner. Today, I hope you spend a little extra time with your loved ones, friends, family alike, and remember that there are some cataclysmic events that occur on a day-to-day -day outside of the weather department, and we should all never take for granted the time we have not only to watch these videos, to spend time on social media, but to also cherish the moments we have with our loved ones in whatever may shape or form that may come. Unfortunately, a lot of lives were lost and are continuing to feel the effects of 9-11 22 years ago. My heart goes out to everybody involved. September is going to be a busy month. The tropics are not going to calm down. We are in the heart of hurricane season. And with that being said, you can guarantee that Weather Center Nazario is going to be working overtime for everybody out there tuning in and watching closely as we monitor what comes out of the tropical Atlantic day by day. But with all that being said, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.